Amen. So we bless Amen. God this morning, uh, this afternoon, brother. And we come again just to say um, thank you to the Lord. Um, thank you for all he's done. I can't help but keep saying thank you because I just keep thinking about his goodness. But we want to um, allow my sister Gloria to come and share what God has put on her heart today. So come on, my sister. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Reverend Letty, for this opportunity to be with you and to share on this prayer call. I've been on the call many times before and I'm able to pop in every now and then and I'm always blessed by the opportunity to be with you. And I just praise God for this platform, this global platform that God has given you to reach out and touch people's lives and bring change. And this is the most important thing that's important. I'm going to cut straight to the chase and say to you today that my assignment today is to talk about praying for leaders. If ever there was a time that we need to be praying for our leaders, today is that time. Amen. And there's a sense of urgency in my spirit about this. And I'm going to share with you what the urgency is. Uh, making sure that we understand really what is leadership and what that means for us who accept the mantle of being a leader. Being a leader is not an easy job and being a leader is more than just a title or sitting in a corner office with a window. That's not what leadership is really all about. And therefore leaders need to be undergirded with prayer daily prayer. Now, I know we say we pray for our leaders, and I believe that we do, but I believe that God has put an urgency in my heart and hopefully in your heart as well to not to pray specific prayers for our leaders. Uh, we're under so much stress. There's anxiety coming at us from all different directions. There's a, you know, we're dealing with a political situation. We're dealing with uh, economic situation, this pandemic. All of these things fall on a leader's shoulders. And this is not, this is, we have other things that come on us on a regular basis, but then we add all of this to it. So leaders need to have prayer. Like I said, there's so much tension in so many areas and we as leaders need to be praying ourselves, but also praying for other leaders. I mean, you can see on our political and national scene today, leadership needs prayer. And I hope you'll agree with me on that. Amen. To carry the mantle of being a leader is a heavy mantle to carry, particularly if we're being healthy and authentic leaders in doing it. Now, the truth of the matter is we have a lot of leaders out there, but I suggest to you that not all of them are healthy in the way that God would have them to be healthy so that they can carry out the assignment that is on them to do what they have to do. Men and women who walk in integrity, men and women who walk with character, this is what God is looking for in our leadership. The Bible even tells us that we ought to pray for our leaders. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, he says, I urge you, Paul is saying, I urge you, the first request to pray for intercession and thanksgiving, pray for everybody. But then he goes on in verse 2 to say, pray for the kings and those in authority. And there God is speaking to people or persons who are in leadership. Paul calls out a specific prayer. He said, pray for the kings and those in authority. So because Paul is being specific in who we should pray for, I believe that we should be specific in how we pray for our leaders. Amen. I, I'm going to share with you just three suggestions that I would have for you to pray for leadership. Now, I know this is, this is not exhausted, but there are probably more that you could think of and Great, add those to your list. But the first thing I wanna to say to you and, and encourage all of us as leaders that we pray for the leader's relationship with God. Now, I know some of you are saying, what do you mean? Every leader has a relationship, especially Christian leaders have a relationship with God. That might not always be the case. And I'm saying that we need to pray for leaders for their wisdom in making decisions. Leaders are making decisions every day. And they need to have a relationship with God that will bring forth the best decisions for their lives. Amen. And we need to have leaders that make 
right decisions for the wrong for the wrong for the right reasons. Let me get that straight. Make right decisions for the right reason. Having a sense of righteousness. And for us as Christians, righteousness means to be in right standing with God making sure that we are on the same lane, we're running a parallel track with whatever God has called us to do. Now, the truth of the matter is, and I hate to bust anybody's bubble, but not all leaders pray, at least in a personal relationship with God. The research tells us that leaders don't have a lot of time. A lot of leaders don't have a lot of personal time with God. They're so busy doing so many other things that that comes in second or third or sometimes not even at all. So we need to understand that as leaders, we cannot get caught up in the busyness of being a leader that we leave out a relationship with God. We need to pray for others and make sure that as we pray for others that we're praying for ourselves, that we're seeking God, that we're having a relationship with God. Now, we know that the Bible teaches us that Jesus prayed. And if Jesus had to pray, who do we think we are if we don't pray as well? Amen. Amen. So we need leaders without prayer. Like, I mean, I'm talking about a serious prayer life where you find time every day to encounter God. I don't know if it's in the morning or in the evening, whatever works best for you, but every leader needs to find a specific time that they're in God's face, seeking God for their leadership and to do what God has called them to do. And the reason why I say this so emphatically is that when leaders don't pray, that brings forth a lot of dysfunction in a leader's life. Almost true to form. If, if you find a leader that's not praying, more than likely you're going to find some dysfunction going on in their life. And the reason is that they are missing some of the blind spots. Hear what I'm saying. Without God's prayer, without God's discernment, the enemy can creep up on you and make you miss out and make you miss hearing from God and other things come your way. One of the things that I like about my car is that I have what they call a blind spot detector on it. I love it. I'll never buy another car that doesn't have a blind spot on it. I'm telling you, because it's that blind spot that helps me to know when I'm approaching possibly danger on the right or on the left. I tell you, I depend on that blind spot because it helps me to see what's coming my way. It keeps me from having an accident, if you will. And I believe that that is true for leaders who are not praying. You're going to have an accident. You're That's going to right. run into some trouble. You're going to run into things that may be beyond what you can handle. But when we have a blind, God becomes our blind spot detector. He becomes the, the vehicle that helps us to move away from danger. So I'm encouraging all leaders and I'm encouraging us as we pray for our leaders, that we pray that God would help them to have those blind spot detectors so that we don't run into danger. Because the reality is the danger that comes is not always about our lives. It's about those that we lead. We can put other people in danger if we're not praying the way that God has told us to pray. Hello, somebody. I hope you hear what I'm saying today. God is calling leaders to be in prayer, to have a time of prayer, to seek the face of God. And that, that helps us to mold us, to, to humble us in who we are as God has called us to be leaders. The second thing I want to suggest to you is that we need to pray for leaders and their families. The Bible teaches us very clearly that we ought not neglect the family. The Bible says that uh, we, sometimes as leaders, we're busy climbing the ladder of success. We're trying to be all that we can be. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But I'm saying in the process of doing whatever you're doing, don't neglect your family. The Bible says that those who neglect their families are worse than an infidel. First Timothy 5 and 8. It teaches us that we have to have a place for our family. Sometimes as leaders, we're so busy climbing the ladder of success that we leave out 
our families, our children, our wives, our husbands, we put them on the back burner. And I've heard more, far too many leaders say that they regret those times when they were climbing the ladder of success, that they neglected their families and somehow it may have come back to haunt them. Amen? Amen. So we need to live our lives in a way that we take care of our families. God has not called you to any leadership position that you have to neglect your family. If you're neglecting your family to do whatever God has called you to do, then you're out of order in what God really wants you to do. Amen? So we've got to understand it's how we treat our families. I was in a conversation with a leader just recently, and my heart was so warm because we were talking about leadership. And one of the things that this person said was that out of all the accolades I can get in life, the most important accolade I get and I want is from my wife and children. Hear me now. We've got to know that God is calling us to take care of our families. Listen to the scripture in Proverbs 31, 28. It says, her children shall rise up and call her blessed. Every leader needs to hear from their family, from their children, from those in their immediate circles to say, this is who this person is. Because when we seek accolades outside of our families, then we may be missing a lot that God would have us to do. Amen. So, and one of the other things I want to point out here is that one of the first lines of attack from the enemy is our children. If the enemy can't get you any other way, he's going to try to attack your children. So when we're praying for leaders, pray that they have a right relationship of how they want to succeed, but also pray for the children, pray for their families, members, because that's where the enemy is going to attack the most. Amen. The enemy will go after your children. The enemy will go after that that is most dear to your heart. So when we're talking about praying for leaders, pray for the leader's family. Pray for the leader that God will give them the wherewithal to pay close attention to their families and know that the enemy wants to attack their families first. Amen. The last thing I want to say to you about praying for leaders is that we need to pray for leaders. You hear what I'm trying to say? We need to pray for leaders that they have a relationship with them. Selves. Listen to what I'm saying. Leaders need to know who they are and they need to know their purpose. And therefore, they don't fall into the ram of trying to meet other people's expectations. That's a lot of unhealthiness that we have in our community because leaders are perpetrating who they really are trying to please somebody else. My, my. We've got to understand that God is calling us to be who we are, to be comfortable in our own skin. Not what we try to be on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. All that's a false reality. Amen. We need to be true to who God has called us to be. We need to focus on what's internal and not so much on the external. Leadership is really about serving. And I want you to hear this. Leadership, God is calling leaders to serve other people, to bring value to people's lives. This is what we need to pray for our leaders, that they, they are willing to serve, to give of themselves and bring value to other people's lives. When somebody encounters somebody and forms a relationship with them, what we need to understand is that when that person leaves us, for whatever reason, they should leave us better than they came. It's because we seek to bring value to them. We seek to serve them. One of my favorite authors for leadership is Simon Sinek. And one of the things he says is leadership is not about being in charge but leadership is about taking care of those in your charge. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for leaders, amen, that mm -hmm. we get this thing right. There's too much going on in the national world, in our local worlds, where we're seeing so much dysfunction in leadership. Leadership is not easy, and I want to be clear about that. No leader is perfect. We all fall short from time to time. But when we call on the name of Jesus Christ, and say, Lord, help me. Pray, 
pray, God, I need your help. I need you to walk with me every day of my life that I can be what you call me to be because leading people is not easy. It can be difficult from time to time. Just like we have our finicky ways, people we serve and lead, they have their finicky ways as well. Amen. So we need the grace of God. Pray for the leader's protection. Pray for the leader to have a spirit of discernment. Pray that leaders are facing warfare, spiritual warfare every day. But if we're praying, God will counteract that. God will bring us to a place of victory if we're praying. Amen. Pray that leaders don't compromise. Pray that God will have us stand tall and not shrink back from the calling that is on our lives. I'm challenging all of us to pray Pacific prayers as we pray for leaders. Pray Pacific prayers as we pray for our leaders. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. That's powerful, Reverend Glow. We are so blessed to be reminded and really even um, in expand our understanding of the not just the need because i think we all understand we need to pray but just the specificity of how we should pray for how leaders we should pray it's yes. very powerful grateful to have you share that uh reverend gloria uh, Perrin is miller mm, i just messing it all up miller Perrin is uh, as i shared an associate pastor at first baptist church of glen Arden. she is a an author as well and she writes on leadership god is using her to develop leaders in our church as well as in other spheres uh, tell us where you can we can get your book uh reverend. yeah let me let me tell you thank you reverend letty i appreciate that uh god uh inspired me uh a few years back when i was actually writing my doctoral degree uh to do some work around leadership and i did some work around uh associate ministers and senior pastors building healthy relationships from that dissertation, God birthed a book in me entitled Raising the Bar and Building Authentic Relationships, Transforming Leaders in the Church and the Workplace. And through that book, God gives me uh, remedies that leaders can know and understand about themselves and who they are and how they are called to lead. And the book can be found on Amazon. It's also on my website, uh, Raising Leaders. Uh, raising the leaders uh, dot com is is the website. I hope I got that right. I'm I'm not the most technical person, <laughs> but I know you can get the book on um, Amazon dot com, and I would suggest that's the best place to find it. But you know, we we study a lot of things in this life, and as leaders, we need to study what leadership is all about mm -hmm. and what God has called us to do. And I can't iterate enough. If there ever was a time when we need to be praying for our leaders, today is that day. Amen. And I love how God does things because I didn't know that Reverend Gloria was going to talk about this until she shared today. And what a timely word for a time like this, that God will give us her to give us a word about praying for our leaders. Because as she said, if there was ever a time we need to pray for leaders, this is it. So let's open the prayer lines now and let's go before our God and let's cry out for our leaders now. Yes, yes, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we come in the precious and holy name of Jesus. God, we say thank you, first of all, for Reverend Gloria. We ask you to bless her and bless her family, God, and bless yes. her prayer life and bless her to yes. walk in relationship, a close relationship with you and have an understanding of herself as a leader, God. Yes. Use her for your glory continually, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over her life. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus not only over my household, over my family, yes, Lord, over God. my husband, God, over my yes, children, Lord, God, God. Yes, that you would God. guide me with your righteous Jesus. right hand, Father, as I lead Lord, others, lead me. Yes, I don't want to lead anyone astray. God, yes, I Lord cry God. out for my pastor, John K. Jenkins Sr., yes, that you Lord guide God. him, that you fill him Please, up God. even today with yes, wisdom Lord and God. guidance and understanding Please, of God. your will, that you bless him and bless his relationship with his yes. family, God. Yes, bless Lord his God. children and even his children's children. Cover yes, him with the precious blood of the Lamb. Continue to draw Jesus. him now to you, God, that he would hear your voice and follow yes, no Lord other, God. God. 
Give him a strong prayer life that continues to grow even as he yes, continues to minister to others. Yes, we cry Thank out, you, God, God, for Angela also Brooks, and we plead yes, the blood of Jesus God. over Leaders her. Leaders of God. Except, God. Yes, Use her God. for your glory. Continue to bless her. Draw her now, Lord God. Give her a powerful prayer life. Help her to understand the need to spend time in your yes, face so daily, God. Lord God. Jesus, Draw her Jesus. in your word, God, that she would meditate on your precepts. As Hallelujah. God, give yes, her hunger God. and a thirst for you like never before. God, that you would bless her family, bless her children, even her children's children, God. Cover her parents in the name of Jesus, we pray. Bless her, God, to even know herself even better as a leader. Yes, so and God. she would live a holy life, a virtuous yes, life. So God. We cry for Muriel Bowser and for yes, oh God. Governor Hogan and Governor, oh God, Governor oh Ralph God. Northam and all Jesus, the governors Jesus. and leaders grew up this Hallelujah, God. We cry out for uh, President-elect Biden and yes, President-elect oh Harris, God. That yes, oh God. That you all them now, that they would have a close yes, oh walk God. with you also walk never with before you. in their lives. God, that you will stir them early in the morning to ah. see your face while you may be found. Yes, so that they will come crying out to you, seeking you, that you would guide them with your righteous right hand. Yes, God, so that they God. would have a time that they set aside, God. Give them a hunger for your word. A hunger, a hunger. Understanding who they are in you, God. That they ah. will walk worthy and walk according to your call. That they would lead a life that's pleasing unto you. That as we follow them, they follow you, oh God. We cry Thank out you, God. for President Trump and Pre yes, Vice President Trump. God, God, God speak, Lord, God. speak, Lord, we speak, Lord, to speak, Lord, speak to them. Draw yes, Lord, God. Draw that them to help them to have a prayer life like yes, never before, God. God. That yes, Lord, even God. President Trump will call on the name of the Lord this day, God. Jesus. That he yes, would spend God. time with you this day. That he would take time to hear your voice this day, God. Yes, help Lord, them to God. understand who he is, God. And yes, Lord, God. For him to do and who he should be what he yes, should be Lord doing God. in this season, God, oh, in the God. name of Jesus. In the name I of Jesus. for his children, for his wife, yes, Lord God. and forgive them at words in season, yes, that they Lord would God. be people who are yielded to you as well. I plead oh, the Lord blood Lord of God. Jesus over every part of his staff, yes, his Lord God. extended family, God. Yes, Lord, Lord God. Your will will be done in their life. will be I done. for this nation, for yes, Lord and God. leaders all over this nation. Oh, God, leaders, God. God. Touch them, God. Raise them up, Lord God. We cry for Help the leaders God. all over the globe, God. Yes, Come Lord God. Me. All those who are in authority, Lord, over people. Yes, Lord God. God. Over China, India, and Japan, and all throughout. All Africa, the world, God. Lord God. God. Your world, Lord God. Promise Your world. Over Nigeria. God, touch yes, his Lord heart. God. Touch Draw him not to you. Let him have a prayer life that yes, calls Lord on God. the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This understanding of his purpose. And Hallelujah, and God. With you, oh God. Bring peace to the land, Father. Yes, Lord God. And our leaders turn their hearts to you, God. Help yes, us Lord to God. turn our hearts to you even the more. We plead yes, the God. blood of Jesus over every nation on this globe. Oh, every nation, Lord God. 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 That you would deliver yes, us from me. Even from yes, this Lord pandemic, God. God, raise the burden, lift raise the off of us, God. Raise Have mercy on us, God. In the yes, name Lord of Jesus, we call for those who are caregivers and those yes, who are serving out on yes, the front Lord. line. Be yes, with Lord. them, be with their families. Yes, Lord God. Them, Lord. Let them have a prayer life like never before. Yes, Lord yes, Lord God. all of this in the precious and holy name in of precious Jesus. precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, Amen. Oh, Amen. 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 Can you Amen. believe us now, Reverend? Yes, sure. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God, our Father, we come before your presence, O God, knowing that thou art an almighty God. Thou art a sovereign God. Yes, thou Jesus. art a God who looks, looks low and sees everything. You, we are doing everything we're saying, yes, and you, God, are able to keep us from falling. Yes. So we come today, Lord God, just believing you as we pray for our leaders. God, we recognize that we can do nothing without thee. Yes. So we ask you, God, to put an urgency in our heart, put a desire in our hearts to lift yes. up leaders. And for those of us who are serving as leaders, Lord, yes. help us to be all that you called us to be. 
God, help us to understand that leadership is about influence. Yeah. And we all have influence over somebody in, from day to day, Lord, help us to understand that our influence can make or break a person, Lord God, mm -hmm. if we're not leading them in a godly way. So, God, we ask you now, God, to help us, Lord, to do what we know to do and help us to understand that being healthy leaders is not meaning that we're perfect leaders. It means mm -hmm. that we're leading on you every day of our lives mm -hmm. and that every day of our lives we're getting better and better. Help us to know, God, that there may have been days that we haven't been all that you've called us to be yeah. but yet through your grace and through your forgiveness God you bring us even closer to you that we can become better in what we've been called to do Lord we just thank you God, God. Thank you. you will bless leaders bless their families oh God bless the relationships they have with you oh God Bless them to be seekers of you that they can even know themselves better, oh God. Lord, we need you as never before, Lord God. We need you, Lord God. We need you to be our God, to be our battle axe, to be our strength, to be our hope, to be our peace, to yes. be everything that we need, God, because we can't do anything without thee. And Lord, as we take on this mantle of leadership, God, help us to do it in a godly way, in a caring way, not to have a title, not to have a big paycheck, not to be have people pat us on the back, but we do it unto thee, oh God, that we might serve your people, Lord God, that we might make them better, that we might empower them, that we might bring them to a place of self-esteem, and then that when they leave our presence, that they go forth to lead and serve others as well. So God, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord God. And we just believe, God, that as we trust you, as we pray and seek your face, our world will get better. We believe that this pandemic is coming to an end because yeah. leaders are praying, oh God. We believe that the epidemics and all the things that are happening, we pray for those persons even on the front line that are, that are hurting, persons who've lost loved ones, oh God, yeah. persons whose economic situations have been <laughs> God, we pray today that you will turn it around, God. Yeah. Lord, your word has said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves yeah. and seek my face and pray, then, God, yeah. as we turn from our wicked ways, you will turn the situation around. So we give you praise, God. Yeah. We thank you, God, that all that you've entrusted unto us, yeah. that we might be vessels meet for the master's use. And, God, we lift up our leaders that they might be better servants for thee. Yes. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise his name. Amen. And amen. we always want to make sure before we depart that every person here has a relationship with the Lord. See, all of the things that you're hearing on this prayer line are premised and, and are based on the notion that you have a relationship with God. God hears the prayers of his people. The yes. sexual and the fervent prayer of the righteous avail much is what the word God says. In other words, people who have a relationship with God, the scripture says his ears are attentive to our prayer. It's not as Reverend Gloria uh, has said that we're perfect. We're not perfect, but we serve a God who's merciful and who has given us the privilege of coming to him and praying because we are it, his children. So yeah. how do you position yourself to be able to know that God will hear your prayer? You want to do the same thing we did. You got to accept Jesus as your saint. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is our mediator. He's our go-between, between us and the Father. In other words, what Jesus said is he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father. No one can come to God Almighty without yeah. going through his son, whom he sent to die for our sins. Yeah, so yeah. I want to make sure that before you leave today, that you have a relationship with God. How do I get a relationship? Somebody saying, it's very simple. All I want you to do is pray this prayer, believe it in your heart, and God says you will be saved. Yes, Repeat yes. this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried. I believe you were buried. And God has raised you from the dead. God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. And I'm turning to you. 
Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen, amen and amen. 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 Wow. Amen. It is always so amazing to me. Every time I repeat that prayer that I could pray and the God who created heaven and earth became yeah. uh, my father. He he became my yeah. love. He became the one who cared enough about me to hear my prayer. Yes. He Hallelujah. Me around. He took a wreck like God. me. And feel Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell somebody. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. The love of God. Only do it. <laughs> it. If you pray that prayer, God yes, is going to yes. do some things in your life that are yes, going to blow will. your mind. You're going yes, to say, I know I'm the same person, but wow, I don't feel Look the same. God. I don't walk the same. I don't talk the same because yes. God will begin to do a work in your life. Thank I you, want Lord. you to tell somebody that you gave your life to Christ today. Find a yes. believer, a person who loves God. I want you to get connected to a good church. First yes. Baptist Church of Glen Arden is an excellent church. I commend it to you. Yes. Wherever yes. you get connected, just make sure they're teaching and preaching you the whole word of God. Because you yes. will grow more. You'll be in a healthy place spiritually if you be in a healthy church. So that's a very yes. that's yes. your most important next step is to yes. get in a good church. And I want to invite you to let me know. Yes. I am Reverend Letty Carr. You can email me at Rev Letty Carr, R E V L E T T I E C A R R at whosoever believes dot O R G. Yes. And I'm telling you, I will respond and I yes. will praise God with you because nothing <laughs> delights my soul more than knowing yes. someone has given yes. their heart to Christ or yes. if God has done anything in your life. I love getting yes. testimony. So yes. definitely shoot me an email. Yes. How about Reverend Gloria Miller Perrin? We are so blessed to have had you mm. here today. What a great word. And such a, I love God. He's so timely. You know what I mean? Yes. I couldn't even have planned this if I wanted to. <laughs> but God knew what was needed. God knew. I thank yes. God for you. And I pray God's thank blessings you. over you and your family. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Letty. We're praying for you because you're doing an outstanding job. And just keep doing what you're doing. Amen. I appreciate that. I need all, look, I tell people all the time, I solicit all the prayers I can get. I know that's right. Need a prayer wall, because I know the devil mad. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> mad. I thank God that he ain't strong enough. Yeah, there you go. There Great. You go. No weapon. No weapon. That's right. That's right. So, thanks to the Most High, all of our friends. Thank you for joining us today. And God yes. willing, we will see you tomorrow at 3.16 p.m. Have a marvelous day. Amen. Uh, God Amen. bless. Love you, sis. Amen. Love you.